Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. How's everybody doing? So, really interesting. Uh, you guys remember when I went to my uh, cousin's house to fix his lawnmower? He gave me that uh, that workbook for small gas engines. <laughs> well, when I took it home, right? I didn't know that it was a workbook. You know. It has like stuff filled in already, you know, like it's like a test workbook, whatever. I don't really think you'll, you know, learn too much from it. Um, see, it's starting like halfway, it's new, you know what I mean? But it asks you questions, you gotta fill in the answers. Well, if you don't know the answers, how are you gonna learn from it? And then you have to assume that the first half of this book is filled in correctly so that you can follow it and kind of learn something, you know what I mean? So I didn't think anybody would really want it, so I didn't list it. Until the episode aired, and I had a couple of guys who said they wanted it. And I'm like, yeah? Do you want it just because I would autograph it? Or do you want it because it's like a collection or something, you know? It's kind of cool. I mean, you don't see too many books for small engines. At least I don't. As you guys know, this looks like a Tecumseh engine, huh? Anyway, so uh, I they told me to put it up. So I'm like, all right, I put it up. So it's in the description of my... <laughs> video uh it's a, it's an ebay listing and it's a 10-day auction i started it off at nine dollars and 99 cents plus shipping whatever and uh i got one bid so i know one guy wants it you know uh if you guys would like this like this um go ahead and bid it's uh the auction goes for 10 days and uh to the winner i'm gonna sign to whoever whatever thanks for watching mowers and blowers and i'll sign it henry you know uh, kind of kind of interesting. I've never done it before and uh, I just didn't think anybody would show any interest That's why I didn't list it initially, but then after the episode aired I had interest so it's listed now It's in the description go check it out bid on it if you want There's a buy it now for $68 and why it's $68 because you guys know I'm I'm of Chinese descent, right? The number 68 is a very lucky number I don't expect anybody to buy it now because it's expensive of course but I figured that it gives them somebody an opportunity to contribute to the channel. If they were reluctant to do it in the past, maybe they'll do it this time. They enjoyed my videos and say, you know, I'll donate $68, you know, to Henry's channel and uh, get a, a souvenir out of it, you know, with a signature. So uh, it's the first time I'm ever doing an autographed item, you know, for sale on the channel. But I figured 10,000 subscribers, there's got to be somebody there who might be interested who's a fan, you know. Anyway, so it's in the description. If you guys want to uh, uh, bid on it, you know, bid um, what you can afford. You know, uh, uh, obviously, it, it's all just going to go back to my channel to make more content for for uh, future videos, you know. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to do a little bit of a quick mailbag here. I haven't done a mailbag in a long time because people stop sending me shit. Okay, so today my episode is... I'm going to be putting together this engine that I got from Nick from uh, Bellport. Uh, as you know from the last episode, I did find a sump gasket and a head gasket, and I cleaned up all the surfaces. And I wasn't going to put this together. Why? Because I thought the camshaft that I had, right, from an, another part from the past, was bent. But then yesterday, off camera, I was studying it, and I was measuring it, and I put it in here with the gear on the crankshaft now. Before I was rotating it without the gear, without this gear on the crankshaft. So I put the gear in and then I started to rotate it, right? And I wanted to see if I could see movement of the, uh, you know, the, the, bend, the bend of the uh, cam. And if you can look at the distance between the teeth and the block, right? If there's a movement, you know, my, uh, microscopic movement, right? Not that you could see it, uh, you know, with the naked eye. But if you don't see movement, it should be okay to go, actually, you know? I mean, we're talking about micro uh, movements here, and honestly, I think the engine would run just fine, you know? And maybe because it didn't have this gear here, that it had some play in the hole where the cam goes into, and that was causing my eyes to deceive me like, th that th like it was bent. So perhaps it's not bent at all, because look, I don't see any uh, movement now that the gear is in here. You know what I mean? So I'm just gonna throw this cam in here and put this engine together and see what happens, you know? Because if, if you can't notice any movement, then it's probably not bent. And even if it was bent, 
it's so slight that you can't even tell, you know what I mean? And, um, I mean, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Uh, anyway, I got a couple of packages here. Um, this one, I believe, is from my friend uh, Robert Nighthawk over at Nighthawk Mowers. Go check out his uh, YouTube. He's got a few videos on there, and he plans on making more. And uh, he's noticed that uh, some of my subscribers has gone over there and uh, checked it out. So it would it would help him out if you go check out my buddy. Uh, and he, this is the head for the Kohler, I believe, that he sent me. And this, I don't know what it is. I think this might be a review. So I'm going to open it up right now in front of you guys and show you what it is. Uh-huh. So a company uh, in China asked me to review their website and um, they had a bunch of stuff in there. I, I think they're, ready? Heated jackets, heated winter jackets. So I'm like, that's kind of cool. So I chose the camouflage one for my gun channel. You know what I mean? If you guys want to check out my gun channel, it's mowers, blowers, and guns. A lot of my regular subscribers go over there, check it out and uh, do me a favor and subscribe. I only have like 1,100 subscribers in there. Anyway, I'll do a review on this uh, in the near future. So um, this is from Robert Nighthawk. This should be the Kohler Courage head that he sent me. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to just plop this head on to that beige craftsman that I was working on. And I uh, abandoned it because I didn't have a head. It was, it runs, but it runs like hell. You know what I mean? So here it is. Oh, he packed it very nicely. Uh, I think Rosie packed it. Rosie is his wife. Thanks, Rosie. So here it is. Here's the Kohler 20 horsepower head. Uh, it's exactly the same horsepower as the engine that I rebuilt there. And um, this, should, this should be okay because look, the uh, studs are on here already, you know? Um, Everything's ready to go. I just need to put it on with the gasket, maybe, and uh, the push rods, and uh, <laughs> see if it runs. You know what I mean? Um, there's some other stuff here. Oh, so here's the valve cover and some nuts and bolts. Um, he also included the head bolts, which is nice, because uh, <laughs> I don't remember where I put it. Oh, well, the, the head bolts are still on there, right? And. Uh, I think this might be the battery to the um, to this thing. He gave me the impact with a bad battery. I had to go buy a battery, but he said he had spares, so I think he sent me some batteries too. Very, very nice of my book. Very nice of my buddy. I appreciate it, man. Yep. Here we go. Got a couple of batteries here. Really appreciate that, Robert. Appreciate it. Oh, he goes by Bobby. I forgot. Sorry, Bobby. Thank you very much and uh, thank you to um, Rosie for sending it to me so uh, when I get this engine this engine put together right we'll try to mount it on the green thing and then I'll find some time and we'll put this head on the other one and hopefully that'll work so busy 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 so let's put this engine together now I think uh, I have to look it over a little bit and then uh, we'll put the gasket on it and then the sump and then put everything together slowly. Just blowing out some, uh, you know, dust or remnants, whatever. So the Crank uh, connecting rod bolts are on tight, um, not super tight, but tight. You can see here, this is the hole, the timing marks to the camshaft. It's unlined up to the little tiny one right there. Once they're lined up, you know that the timing should be correct. Now comes the governor gear and this just sits just like that <laughs> I know it just seems like it's not right but that's how it goes you know it sits right there just like that when you put the cover on 
when you put the cover on, that, that has to be lined up. And because it's at a, uh, there, just like that. When you line it up, this part here goes into a part of the sump that holds it, as well as the synchro balancer weight here. This part here, there's a, there's a line molded in the um, sump cover that holds that there, this line right there. So we'll take this now, get a gasket, put it on, and hopefully it'll pop in all right. There. Now we put it on this stand. See the governor's shaft, how it works? That's how the throttle moves. And it'll be just perfect right there. The weight needs to be lined up with that hole there so that when I put the sump cover on, it'll just glide right into place. Don't move. Now I'm going to spray a little bit of uh, contact cleaner from my friends over at Luke Pro Products just for the uh, surface so that it's not greasy, so that the gasket will um, sit there without any uh, oil residue on the surface. This is my probably my 16th engine build. Um, three years ago, if you said that I would be rebuilding engines for small tractors, I would say no effing way. But over the years, you learn. Uh, in the beginning, of course, you are very apprehensive about it and intimidated by it because you're out of your element. But once you get it in your element, there's nothing to it. It's simple. As long as you've done it a bunch of times, it's simple. So uh, I'm gonna get some uh, assembly lube from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Just gonna dab some right around the move, moving parts, the connection here, the gear, just, I and mean, this is really thick stuff. It'll just stick to it, you know what I mean? And of course, more lube means better uh, for friction. So right around this area is gonna be a lot of friction because the gears are just moving and moving. I mean, millions of revolutions, you know what I mean? So it's gotta be lubed well. Of course, when we add the Earl in here, the whole thing's gonna be submerged and oil's gonna splash all around and coat everything. But you just wanna get a good amount of assembly lube. Let me get the gasket now. Here's the gasket kit that I got. It's only $10 on eBay. Um, it comes with every gasket you'll need for a single cylinder Briggs. It's got these valve seals too. I need to, I need to just rip this whole thing apart because I'm not gonna try to weasel the gasket out of here and bend it. So it's very fragile, you know, the gasket. If you tear it, you're done, which is what I feel like I might be doing. Let's take out this heavy head gasket first. We're gonna be putting on the head soon too. Remind me not to sit there. Hey. There we go. Here's a valve cover gasket too, although I don't think I need it. I'll just save it for when I do need it. So like I said, $10 for this kit. If you search on eBay for it, you'll find it. So uh, here's the gasket. Uh, looking at the orientation, it looks like it's there. You have these dowel pins over here, so that it kind of guides it, you know? And usually I would put a little bit of uh, silicone on both sides just to keep it in place, but it looks like this one is just sitting right there perfectly. Each hole is centered in the gasket, so it's good to go. Uh, I just have to think a little bit more because is there something that I forgot to put in here that will make me have to open this thing up again. So we got the tappets in there, I see them. Both tappets are in there, the cam is in there, the governor gear is in there, synchro balancer, the links, the connecting rod is attached to the crankshaft, 
crankshaft gear is on, timing marks are lined up. I can't think of anything else to put on here. I also cleaned up the sump. <laughs> to the best of my ability. Because you don't want any foreign objects, metal shavings in here, because that'll get mixed in with the earl in the sump. And then it will uh, eventually move its way up to the gears and cause a problem. So we're looking at this here. Everything looks good. This is usually busted. And this part here that holds the synchro balancer's weight is usually busted too. But uh, this one looks good. Surfaces are clean. Harry, you have to clean the surface. Yes, 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 I know. Just, you know, just to get the majority of the grease off the surface is all. I know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of uh, different things you got to think about. But I mean, look, an engine wasn't built in a day. In this case, we might have to do it. So here, the round part, the round part here is there. And usually you just wiggle it around and it'll go in. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. See? The uh, crank seal is on the bottom of this sump and you have to earl it. You got to put some earl in here. So let me prep that. Blow out some crap that's in it. All right. So where's that? Uh, there we go. Got some uh, lube here. Put it on the crank seal. Generous amount. Use your fingers. Rub it around like that. That's good. This assembly lube is very thick stuff. So it'll adhere to pretty much anything there. That'll coat just fine. All right, so here we go. Let's just plop this on and hopefully it goes in. Uh, governor gear is lined up with this. That's straight. So hopefully this will just go right on. Henry, shut up and do it already. Oh my God, that was one shot. Perfect, it went right on there, which means it's lined up correctly. Awesome. So uh, I'm gonna find the sump bolts and we'll just drill them in. So, in time lapse, we have the sump cover on with the gasket. Got the dipstick in there. We put the flywheel in there along with the uh, blower fan and the bracket to attach the grass isolator shield, <laughs> whatever it's called. Uh, we put on the magneto and gapped it at 10 one thousandths. Put this uh, silly vent tube in there, right? Uh, got the head on. Um, this impact is rated at 200 um, 
inch pounds, which is about 220 is what the specs are. It's close enough. I've never had a problem. Got a head gasket in there. Uh, found a uh, overhead valve ga uh, valve cover. Uh, found uh, four 3 8 bolts. I had some 10 millimeter, which I had to look for the right ones. So that fit in there. The gasket was good. Uh, you saw I also put in the push rods uh, and also did the valve clearances to uh, four one thousandths on the intake, six one thousandths on the exhaust. I do need a <laughs> muffler again. I don't know where I'm going to get it. I have to find a spark plug. I'll probably take it from that other head. And uh, so we've got the magneto on there, the flywheel, dipstick, valve cover, sump cover, head, push rods are in there. I now need a carburetor with an intake manifold, a choke linkage, right? I need a starter. <laughs> I need plenty. So I'm going to go look for all that shit right now, and hopefully we can get this engine together today. I've got this Nikki carb that I got from Nick from Medford. He gave me a whole bunch of them. This one looks good, and just from looking at it, it looks clean enough that it hasn't been through hell, you know what I mean? So I'm going to blow through here. And it can blow, flip it upside down to mimic the fact that the bowl is filled with fluid. And so the float is being pushed up and the needle is seating and I should not be able to blow. And I can't. So it seems good. Uh, I'm going to remove this um, fuel solenoid because I hate them. And not to mention the fact that I don't have a wire that, to connect it anyway. So um, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take this uh, bowl out, take a look at it, blow it out a little bit. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll start doing the holes right here. Should be good. Sounds good. And we'll just try it, you know what I mean? look at this fuel solenoid as you could see it looks good but either way I'm gonna grind this off anyway I don't want it I'm gonna remove this oh god I'm gonna cut off this valve found a couple of bolts that attaches the intake manifold to the engine block has the orange gasket it has to be very good uh, I want to say that I should put another gasket there but I think the orange one is supposed to be on bare metal and if you put another gasket on there, then the orange will be hitting the soft gasket. So I don't think, I think that's it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I also had to go look for the throttle linkage here with the small little uh, wire. And then I had made this a few years ago, just sitting around, so a choke. choke leakage. Okay, I got the carburetor on here and uh, adjusted the linkages. It's tight enough. So I've got the choke in here for the choke and the throttle right there. And it feels good. 
I had to bend this a little bit because it was discombobulated. But as long as you have full um, movement, all the way uh, closed, all the way open, all the way closed, all the way open. And then you try it with this. And it closes the choke when you raise the throttle lever all the way, then off choke, and then low throttle. So it seems good. Didn't really clean this too thoroughly, but it seems to be good. Uh, now we need to put the starter on. So I've got this starter. I tested it. It works. It had a plastic Bendix gear on it. I took a metal one from somewhere else and just put it on here. <laughs> that was a video in itself, how to swap a Bendix gear on the starter motor. Uh, I found these two uh, starter mounting bolts. They're the ones with the Torx design on it. And you need this clip that holds the stator wire in place so that it doesn't move upwards and have the flywheel teeth grind it out, break it. So this is actually important. A lot of people don't use it, but you're supposed to use it. So it's easy to mount the uh, starter and I'll just mount it right now. Just gotta get a torque wrench. Make sure the stator wire is between that clip that I put on there. You could use a half inch wrench to put it on, but the Bendix gear gets in the way of it. You don't want to strip it too hard because it goes into the engine block and you're done ski. So that's on there. Eh, actually, it could be tighter. There you go. See it matches up. It goes backwards and goes back down again. That's good. I had this dipstick on backwards, now it's on right. So it looks like we're good now. Got the oil drain plug. See what I mean? See how many things are on an engine that you gotta put together? It's nonstop, plenty of stuff. I'm just happy that I have all the tools and all the parts. I found this elbow that attaches to the muffler exhaust port. Got a gasket under there just for testing so I'll know later on what fits onto the tractor and what doesn't. I know I have an elbow which means I just have to find a pipe with an exhaust muffler here that will coincide with this bend. Uh, it kind of sticks out a lot. <laughs> Pretty wide you know I don't know if that'll work but it's a little bit of a cushion to the exhaust you know it's more like a straight pipe as opposed to not having any pipe at all because you could damage your exhaust valves that way if you didn't have something to uh, kind of muffle the impact of the exhaust coming out you know so. We're getting a spark plug from a head it's the one from the uh, original head off the Dunsky motor. Gonna clean this up a little bit and put it into the new engine we just made. Yeah, 
though. I feel pretty good about it. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any compression or anything, but <laughs> I feel pretty good about how we built it. You know what I'm saying? Everything went in place. I didn't have any really uh, major problems or complications. Starter went on fine. Head, sump cover. The sump cover is kind of tricky sometimes because you got to wiggle, wiggle it around with uh, channel locks on the crankshaft to move it around just so it pops back in, but it popped back in right away. So very pleased about that everything seems to be good i don't know about the carburetor i don't know about the head i don't know about anything else completely a mystery to me but remember we have a new uh block had a small crack in it i repaired it with jb weld as you know and that's tight enough for a spark plug so we have a spark plug in here now magneto's on there gapped at uh 10 one thousandths uh did the valves right put a small little muffler elbow tail uh exhaust pipe there i'm not I, I have the uh i have the cover but we're not gonna put the cover on yet because we don't really know if this engine runs yet you know but let me just put it on there just uh so you guys can at least see what it's supposed to look like you know with these it's kind of tricky to get it just right. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I don't have a cover, you know, for the air filter, but that's right now not that important. But we won't put this on until we got everything figured out, you know what I mean? So, um, looking good. I don't think I'm missing everything, anything. I'm gonna take you around here and you guys can tell me if I'm missing anything be too late anyway because i probably finished the video by now because <laughs> i'm three or four days ahead you know you guys are watching this about three or four days uh earlier uh later i mean so you know head gasket sump gasket valves are done magneto flywheel stator dipstick starter oil drain repaired the crack intake manifold the gasket uh, this is a nikki with the bent fuel nozzle means that it was it design, designed for 17 horsepower or higher i don't remember or don't know what this is rated at but being it's a 31 cubic inch it's probably 17 or over so you need the bent one the bent nozzle going backwards on the nikki carbs right the jet is drilled a little bit bigger than the one that sticks straight out so if you have 17 horsepower single cylinder briggs engine or or lower like a 12 13 14 15 15.5 that kind of thing uh, then you need the nikki carb that has the nozzle that sticks straight out and you need one of those bendy uh fuel lines but because i think this is a this is a 31 cubic inch one you need the one that's curved 90 degrees backwards this one the jet is drilled out a little bit bigger so it won't surge if you have surging issues change it to the the bent backwards kind and it should fix the problem we've got our linkage on here we've got our choke linkage that i made bracket was on here from before it has this thing for the uh throttle cable that attaches into here i feel pretty good about it i really do uh this is the vent hose that is cut in half, but this is supposed to just go into the um, air filter breather area, you know? It's not really all that important. It just makes a mess if you overfill your oil. And if you have blowback, all the oil will come out that way. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, that's assembling my 16th rebuilt engine. And, uh, you know, it's kind of fun. I, I kind of like it, you know? But uh, that's my afternoon, man. Another episode done, putting together a single cylinder engine that I got for free. It's right free. Well, I had the block. I just needed the rest of the components, most mostly the piston and the connecting rod that came out of the smoky engine that Nick gave me. So thanks a lot to Nick again for uh, giving me another engine that I need. Um, and thanks to Robert Nighthawk for sending me the Cola Courage uh, head 
for the uh, beige tractor that we have to get going. Uh, that'll come after, let me get this straightened out first, you know. Too many things happening at the same time, you know what I mean? Uh, I want to thank the outpouring of support from my subscribers because I had about five or seven guys who offered to send me the head for the Cola Courage. <laughs> you guys have a lot of busted Cola Courages out there, as I do. They're terrible engines, you know. That's why everybody has blown Cola Courages out there, you know. But anyway, that's my episode today, putting together this engine, and hopefully we'll uh, get them mounted on that tractor pretty soon. But stay tuned for that episode as well as the Call of Courage episode. And thanks a lot for the support, fellas. Continue to buy stickers. I only have two kinds left. Go to my eBay in the description if you want to bid on that Gas Engines book. Also, bid. It's your contribution to the channel. I appreciate it. Or you can contribute a buck or two. PayPal.me slash Mowers and Blowers. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers! Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.